Hi folks, so I'm still not doing a whole lot on the bench. I've been trying to catch up on all my chores, as I said earlier, and uh, sell some of the things I've fixed have been piling up here. Um, but one thing I still continue to do is I do a lot of reading. I I'm a voracious reader. And uh, I read a popular audio farm pretty much every day that I'm a member of. And when you're members of forums on the internet, you learn pretty quick who the sharp cookies are. And there's several of them on this forum. Uh, there's a guy who goes by Retrovert, very, very smart man. Learned a lot from him. And uh, there's another guy, Conrad H. And he chimed in in the thread I was reading about distortion analyzers. Now, one of the members had bought the uh, highly regarded Quant Asylum distortion analyzer, uh, something, in fact, I had looked at before I bought the uh, um, after I had wound up with this behemoth here and I believe I said in the video that if I had it to do all over again I'd take a good hard look at it. They are often out of stock. Uh, earlier they had a problem um, due to the supply chain trying to get some of the chips and I think they actually had to redesign because of that. Um, but in any event, Conrad H. says something that I found very interesting. Uh, this gentleman was having trouble getting distortion measurements that were meeting spec to the device he was uh, measuring and it had been totally rebuilt and conrad said this i'm going to put his quote up here on the page but basically he said stop measuring at the source you have to measure at the amplifier now i remember scratching my head thinking i, I couldn't imagine it makes that much difference but i'm going to demonstrate it actually does and uh, this also answers the question that somebody asked on, on my channel here i don't recall who it is and i can't go through all the comments to find it but he said how come your distortion measurements don't meet spec and i said well this thing's not calibrated and i'm not that concerned about it and while both of those are true this gets it a little closer to the mark so i'm going to show you how i determine in that because I had um, tried what Conrad was saying and he's right. So let me show you what I did and what I found. Okay, I got this little Yamaha monoblock I found on the side of the road because I guess nobody had a use for it and honestly I don't have a use for it either but it's really good for demonstrating things like this. Now what I had done when I got my bench set up is I wanted to have uh, purpose-built dummy loads pre-wired so I have these dummy loads here um, they're about oh that long they have 1000 watt 8 ohm load resistors and I have banana plugs on the front here from jacks and tapped right off the back of that I have BNC connectors that go up here into the analyzer. Conrad said that's not the way to do it. So to prove his point and try it for myself, I made a couple of cables like this that have B and C and banana, but they're tied together here like this. So I have one of these installed in the back of the amplifier and that's going to B channel or channel 2 which is the bottom display and I'm going to zoom in on that a bit and uh, I'm going to show you what this does because I was really kind of shocked anyway this feeds the input or the oscillator output into the amplifier this is from the back of my dummy load this is the new connector that's like this so let's see what the difference is So, channel A, which is fed from the dummy load, is giving us 0.024% THD. Yet if you look at channel B, we've got 0.004. Now I've seen it where it's almost a factor of 10, where I got 0.02 and then 0.002. I'm frankly kind of shocked all we're talking about is the length of speaker wire. But what Conrad said is, since we're not using superconductors, for measurements like this, it does matter. And there are those who might say this vindicates the use of speaker cables, but what we're talking about here are inaudible amounts of distortion. 
nobody can hear the difference between 0 0.02 and 0.004%. Nobody. They say that THD does not become audible until it's in excess of 1%. Which brings up an interesting point. Why do we see amplifiers that are rated in these vanishingly low amounts of distortion? Well, my belief, and this is my opinion, is that um, manufacturers were designing for people reading specs. And THD got to be a big thing, I think, back in the early 70s when solid state amplifiers began, became more popular. And people were just trying to manufacturers were competing for low levels of THD because that's what people are looking for and then it became IMD or TIM that they were looking at and then they were looking at all different kinds of things and the manufacturers responded by making amplifiers that met these specs do they sound better there's more to that than meets the eye because the main thing is how your amplifier reacts to the speaker you connect to it. Speakers are very complex loads. So this is probably another topic for another day, but I did want to show that, yeah, it makes a difference how you connect this thing. And uh, I learned something, and that's why I constantly read. I'm gonna be making a video here shortly because um, I probably sold more of these analyzers than Panasonic has. People have seen pictures of them on the audio forum I'm a member of. Uh, I've shown them on a YouTube channel and people have bought them based on those, those uh, viewings. So one gentleman I know named Frank who contacted me, he wound up buying like four of these from overseas. One working one and then three that had bad displays. And what he was told and what he found to be true is you can get replacement displays for these for around $25. So I'm gonna be making a video where I replace the display. This one is, is okay, but I think it's pretty yellow compared to what the new display is gonna be. Um, Pac 1085, my benefactor who sold me a, um, a parts unit so I could get the oscillator going in mine, said that he saw a picture of Frank's and he's thinking about doing the same thing. So I'm gonna do a video on how to change that. And uh, right now, this is all I have to show here. Let's just say I learned something and that makes it for a good day. Anyhow, I thank everyone for watching. And as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot.